At the beginning of last year, on January 14th at 6 p.m., I started driving and I didn't stop until 8 p.m. on the next day. That is, for 26 hours straight, I voluntarily drove more or less nonstop. This was an event I concocted as celebration for reaching 1,000 followers on Twitch. The idea was simple. For every $5 raised, I would drive the highway loop in the video game Grand Theft Auto V one time. Each loop takes about 13 minutes, give or take, depending on what you're driving and how you're driving. And in the end, I drove 130 loops, and I ran one loop. That running loop alone took over an hour. The performance ended when the loop counter reached zero, and I called this event the Loopathon. It might seem monotonous or even torturous to drive continuously for hours in a video game, but this tapped into something deeper for me a long-held love for what I would call passive gaming experiences. It's a mind-numbing enjoyment that's not that dissimilar to something like scrolling TikTok, a kind of aimless wandering. And with many games, this sandboxy, go-your-own-way type gaming is not just allowed, it's often encouraged. Go into the game world and get distracted until you've started 10 tasks and finished none. Or just load up and engage with none of the intended quests. Driving, especially in video games, is sometimes exactly what I'm looking for to calm my mind. And frankly, I'd rather not pay for the gas to do it in real life sometimes. So as absurd as it may sound, I actually welcomed the Loopathon with open arms. I was excited to do it. And it was a huge success. Folks loved the experience of the Loopathon so much that it became a running gag to suggest that I do it again. And I wasn't exactly keen to, but I'd always say, okay, great, but what game am I playing? Because I'm not going to play the same game again. I had paid my dues in Grand Theft Auto V. Tears of the Kingdom, the latest installment in the Zelda franchise, came up more than once as a potential option. So one day with some free time, I decided to map out what loop I could run inside of Tears of the Kingdom. Since the 80s, Link, the silent swordsman protagonist of the Zelda franchise, has appeared in over 40 games spanning four decades. Zelda has long been a core touchstone within the zeitgeist of video game culture. And within these games, including Tears of the Kingdom, maps, guides, and waypoints nudge us toward the developer's true intended goal. All of these systems in place to help us reach that goal teach us how to play the game. And as the player, we are in control of Link's actions. But what if Link abandoned his goal and did something else? What if instead we chose to fail? It was within this thought that I ultimately moved from considering this as another loopathon into something more. For me, research is broad and often unexpected. I find inspiration in the most disparate of places. And if I'm not listening actively, I often miss these moments. The conceptual framework can come later, but first I must listen to the what-ifs that appear along the way. Besides, when I'm making art, like most folks, I never really know where I'm headed when I begin anyways. This is especially true because often my hands move quicker than my mind. So what began as little more than a thing to do on a weekday afternoon to unwind became meaningful in a way I could not have forecasted. The resulting piece, titled Link Running From His Problems, is an hour and 12 minute looping video piece. And in the piece, Link runs infinitely through the game's map. By refusing to fulfill Link's programmed mission of saving the princess, we, as the player of the game, fail in the eyes of the designer. This becomes a powerful metaphor. Perhaps the prescribed expectations of the world were not written with our playstyle in mind. Indeed, the social structures which surround us push many ideas and identities into the margins. Failure, then, becomes a form of refusal, a way to redefine success on our own terms. From there, research can come back into play. With the skeleton of what this piece might mean, I can connect it back to a broader cultural conversation about queer gaming, failure, and more. For instance, Edmund Chang's Queer Gaming explores non-competitive, non-productive, non-judgmental play, highlighting the potential of failure and goofiness in creating new worlds. Additionally, Jack Halberstam's The Queer Art of Failure and Jesper Jules' The Art of Failure similarly resonate with this theme. 
Their dialogue at the 2013 Queer Games Conference covered the serendipitous and clear crossover of their work. At one point, they discuss why we might want to desire our own unbecoming, the ways in which we desire to be undone. And even if I'm not playing Grand Theft Auto V, I can't escape the loop, because ideally at this point, my research will have led me to new ideas for me to explore, putting me right back at the start. Fucking free!